Good evening from New York. I'm Ed Schultz, and this is MSNBC's continuing coverage of the situation in Egypt. And in Cairo this morning, protesters are preparing to march on the presidential palace. It's a day that could determine the outcome of this uprising. In Cairo today, uh, Ahmad Rahab uh, from the Council on Is American Islamic Relations, he's the executive director of CARES Chicago office, and he joins us tonight. Ahmad, thank you for your time. Give us a sense of how intense it is going to be in the next few hours leading up to the massive march that's going to be taking place at the presidential palace. Ed, it's good to be on the show. Let me begin by saying that I'm here in my individual capacity as an Egyptian uh, who's interested in seeing democracy take place in this country. Uh, like many other Egyptians, I'm not here representing CARE. Um, the mood is very apprehensive. It's very tense. Um, people don't know what to expect tomorrow. Um, it's, it's just played out like a uh, TV drama so far uh, with lots of twists and turns. The violence that we saw on the streets, the quote-unquote civilian violence, uh, really was not there. It was a new phenomenon. It didn't occur until the uh, quote-unquote uh, pro-Mubarak uh, forces or, or, or supporters came into the streets, uh, who were really nothing but a farce. I mean, a lot of people suspect that they were paid thugs. The President Mubarak himself um, was involved in that. He's too much of a political veteran, and this was very politically naive uh, action. Probably individuals in the Democratic National Party, which is quite the culprit here, the ruling party in this country, uh, where most of the corruption occurs, um, probably somebody tried to uh, play up to the president by doing him this favor, which obviously backfired. Ahmad Rahab with us tonight. You say that you are not there on an official capacity with CARE. You're there as an Egyptian citizen. Give us a sense of how determined these people are now to see Hazim Mubarak leave. And would they accept the reported negotiation of the vice president, Omar Saliman, taking over for Mubarak? Do you think that that would disperse the crowd, go home and wait for the elections? Would they accept that? I think I agree with the previous report from Aya, uh, who was on your show just a few moments ago, that you're going to find a mixed bag. Um, I was there marching with uh, the Egyptian public on the first Tuesday, um, and then there again on the Friday that claimed the Greer Square, and then back again on the Million Man March. I was not there during the violence yesterday, but I talked to a lot of people. And what I can tell you is that one of the demands of this revolution was change. Um, people want democracy, they want freedom, they want human rights, they want transparency in government. And he wants an end to the uh, politically corrupt atmosphere that really permeates uh, many levels of, of government, not just uh, uh, at the very top, but uh, through all levels. As far as Mubarak himself, my personal take on that is that um, the fact that he's going to leave in September satisfies the request that Mubarak be out of the picture and that we get change. Um, it does not happen; it have to happen instantaneously. And the reason why I say that is because I got a sense of how many um, average Egyptians um, really have a lot of respect for him as an individual, even if they don't like him as a politician. He's been around for 30 years. Egyptians are sentimental people. They're also a very proud people. They don't want to see somebody who was a symbol of their country for so long be ousted in a humiliating uh, fashion the way Ben Ali of Tunisia was. And I can respect that. Now, for me, what I really want to see happen is change in terms of the political culture, in terms of ending the corruption. So I hope that if there are rallies tomorrow, you don't fixate on Mubarak, who's effectively out of the picture, but rather on ending corruption, on calling for the end of emergency laws in this country. How thorough was the crackdown today, in your opinion, and will we get any coverage of this march tomorrow? Well, again, the crackdown that occurred on the journalists and even on the uh, pro-democracy public was not, did not take place directly by uh, government forces, meaning the police or the military, but rather by individuals that many people don't know where they came from. Um, again, they suspect that they're paid thugs. Um, I don't believe that they're going to dominate tomorrow. I think the government learned its lesson, uh, those in the government that were involved. The, the police itself, and that was the only violence we saw previously to, prior to the thugs, um, the, violent, the police violence against the protesters in the early days of this revolution, which is a week ago, um, they're not going to be in full force tomorrow. Yeah. So I don't suspect that you're going to see violence from them either. Uh, 
especially after the Prime Minister gave orders to the Minister of Interior, who's head of the police force, not to interfere in the protests uh, in any violent fashion. Ahmad, uh, one quick question. Uh, there's not a legal entity that Mubarak is negotiating with. I mean, who's representing these people? I mean, if he makes a deal with the mob, how do you know it's going to stick? Uh, you mean in terms of the pro-democracy uh, public? In, in terms of, of all of that, I mean, it, for uh, it, it's it's really there's no legal entity there or no formation of a government that Mubarak, Mubarak would be negotiating with or Soliman. Uh, so who's representing these people? Well, the pro-democracy public is not a political party that needs to sit at a table. They're the public, and their demands are clear. They want an end to the Mubarak regime. They want free elections uh, that are transparent and that, the, that, a, that a free and independent judiciary can oversee. Uh, they want a two-term presidency, not a presidency for life. They want a new parliament because the last parliament elections were heavily rigged. These are the demands from the streets from the public. The only thing the government needs to do is, is put out public announcements with a set yeah. schedule and a guarantees that these demands are going to happen. And then you're and, going to and see this a is, And this is one of the things that the Mubarak people are saying is that they don't know if those demands will change if they were to relinquish power. Ahmad Rahab, thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate it very much. Our coverage of the crisis in Egypt continues after this. You're watching MSNBC. Stay with us.